Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to configure your DWIN display and this will allow you to upload your future code for it. So this should be basically where you should begin with the display. So now you can see that I have already opened the DWIN DGAS tool but I will also show you how to get this tool and uh, how to kind of install it on your computer. So you have to go to Devin's web page and open their tool page. And then there you will find this uh, DGAS V7642-0104. Uh, and this is their uh, toolbox, which I showed you recently. And then you just simply download it. And once you downloaded it, you open the file, uh, which is a zip file, and you will find a folder in it. And then this folder contains all the uh, files which you need. So in fact uh, this folder is the portable version of the wall uh, toolkit. So you just copy this folder somewhere, unzip it somewhere, and then uh, you use the exe file which you find in it, uh, this one here, from there. So then I return to the software and we are at the main page of the software. So first we have to start a new project to start with everything. So I show you how to do that. And it's very obvious because uh, it's in front of us. It is this new button, but you can also navigate to the file part and then click on the new icon. They are the same. So I just click on this new icon and then this window comes up. Here you see the resolution of your display and uh, here you can see the path where you save the project folder. And uh, regarding the resolution, it's very important that you have to consider if you want to use your display in portrait mode or standing mode or uh, landscape mode, uh, because then you have to flip uh, the numbers in the resolution uh, value. So now this is in landscape mode because the horizontal axis, that's the X axis, uh, has more pixels. So then obviously it's a... Uh, uh, horizontal layout or landscape layout. So I will uh, leave it like that. And then regarding the file path, we can uh, open this uh, browser by clicking on this button. So once you click the, this button with the three dots, this uh, window comes up and here you just see your uh, folders and libraries. So you just navigate to your library where you want to uh, save your project files. And then uh, you just, uh, yeah, save everything by uh, selecting the folder and pressing OK. And then also you have to press OK here, which will return you to the main screen. So now we have our project, but you can see that under the touch and display config, we have an empty tab. So we have to create a page and that has to be done visually. So how this Divin uh, display editor works is that you are not adding like elements, like buttons, checkboxes or uh, lists or something to the display, but you have to draw them in advance in a, in a picture editor software like uh, GIMP, Photoshop or Paint or whatever. And then you have to use those pictures and then uh, kind of add functionalities to certain areas on that picture using this program. But uh, you cannot add uh, like objects directly to the software uh, of your display. So I will bring up Photoshop here and show you my display. So I'm here in Photoshop and you can see that I already created the image. I don't have to show you how to draw an image because uh, yeah, you have to know what you want to draw. So uh, the only thing that I want to emphasize is that the image resolution has to be the same as your display's resolution. So 800 times 480. And then you just put the content on the display like now I just put text, I will not add any controls or anything. And uh, then you have to save it in JPEG uh, format. And what is really important is that the file name should start with 00. zero. And that means that that will be the first page uh, displayed on your display. So if you have, for example, multiple pages or multiple items, then you, and they have to follow each other in sequence. So 00, zero, zero 01, 0, 2, and so on and so on. After the two digits, you can uh, write anything, but you have to include those two digits uh, in front of the file name. So now uh, let's say that we save this image as 
zero zero underscore first page dot jpg and then uh, we return to the uh, DGAS software. So we are here in the software and we navigate to the images view here at the left side and uh, we have to click this plus button to bring up the file browser and we can select the image that we just saved. So I click this button and then now I'm in my project folder and I know that I have saved my raw image, the JPEG image in this DWIN set folder so I can find it easily. So I just open it and you can see that I saved it as 00 and then the rest of the file name. So I open this and now you can see that this uh, shown up here. And you can also see that uh, the display here somewhat uh, squeezed and that can happen sometimes uh, because yeah, the software is not perfect. So you can go to the settings here and set the resolution again. And uh, you can see that here the resolution disappeared. So we just enter it again. So this is the X resolution. And then here you have to enter capital X. That's very important. And then you just enter the Y resolution. So now we have a nice uh, image. So this is done. And now we have to still continue with this image. So we go back to the welcome tab here. And then down here at the DGAS config tool uh, area, we have this ICL generator. So I open this and now you can see this window. So we have to find the same picture again by clicking the select picture uh, button here. And uh, the software automatically navigates to the folder that we used for the last time. So we just open the same picture. If you have multiple pictures, obviously you can select and load multiple pictures, but we select this one. I open it. So now uh, you can see that our picture is on the list. And now we have to click uh, generate ICL. So I click this thing and then we end up in the same folder in the dvin underscore set. And you can see that I actually already have this file because uh, I wrote the article first and created this video after that. Uh, but the file has to be saved as 32.icr, but you don't have to write the ICR because the extension is already there. But the file name has to be 32 because this is how the display will be able to find it when you upload this file via SD card. So you just uh, save it as 32 and uh, just press the save button. So when the process finished, you will just get this window. So you just press OK. And while this window is still open, you go to the CFG edit uh, tab. So once uh, this is open, uh, we want to change a few parameters. The most important thing is this touch sensitive variable changes update. So this is by default non auto, and this is very wrong because if it's on non auto, then that means that whenever you interact with the display, uh, the display will not send anything to the serial port. So for example, if you put a slider on your display and you move that slider and update the value of a number, that number will not be transferred to your uh, serial port because this is on non-auto mode. So you just change this to auto. So that means that whenever you interact with the display, then the display will automatically send uh, the values or parameters to the serial port. And then you can capture it with your Arduino or with your computer. So this is done. Uh, you can alternatively also change the touch sound. So the display beeps whenever you touch it. If you are annoyed by it, you just turn it off. Then uh, this power on display uh, direction is basically the orientation of the display. So you can play around with this uh, if you want to have it in a portrait mode or uh, landscape mode, then you can uh, change these parameters. And of course, also you can rotate your picture based on how you place your display in a certain device. So that's why you can also uh, play with this uh, parameter. And uh, then finally, you have to change the board rate uh, to 9600 if you are using this display with an Arduino and the software serial library. If you use it with an Arduino Nano or Uno, it's very probable that you have to use these uh, software serial functions because uh, they don't have multiple serial ports or native USB where you could use uh, another serial port. So just uh, set it to 9, 
1600 because this is a stable board rate and uh, the software serial will work properly with this. And then uh, here we don't need to change anything else, so you just have to click new CFG. And again, uh, the software navigates to the Devin set folder of your project folder, and you have to save your file as T5L CFG, so something like this. So you just save it. And when it's done, you can close this window. So now the next uh, step is that you have to create fonts. So again, you go to this DGAS config tool and you open this uh, zero word bank generating link. And then this window comes up. And uh, first you select your font. So I select something, it doesn't matter now. Or it does because uh, here we cannot see any characters. So I go back to the font again. Now I have a proper font. So here in the select car, I would select another wider character, let's say W. And you can see that half of the W is missing. So then you have to change the scale of uh, your letter in order to fit uh, the letters, all of these letters in their corresponding frames. So first I change the horizontal uh, scale. So you can see that we squeeze it on the horizontal axis. And now they seem to fit their frames. But uh, you can see that uh, the letters are a bit uh, serrated at the edges uh, because their proportions are not uh, correct. So it's uh, much taller than uh, wide. So we have to make it shorter. And you can see that now all edges are smooth. And uh, I can see that probably the last character here is a few pixels out of the frame, so I move on the horizontal uh, scale a little bit, something like this. And when you are done with this, you have to click this button and wait. So you can see that uh, now it's building the uh, fonts at different sizes, I, I suppose, from these uh, numbers. So you have to wait for this process. So now, as you can see, it's finished. Press OK. And here comes a trick. The file, this file, is not created in the dvin underscore set folder. It is created in the folder where your exe file is located. I will show it. So now we are in the DGAS tools uh, folder. So this is not the project folder, but the folder where the exe file and all the other files can be found. Here is the exe file of the tool. And then here is the font file. And uh, this should not be here, but uh, it is generated in this folder. But this should be moved to the divin underscore set folder of your project. So copy it or cut it and move it to that folder. So now I'm in that folder and uh, I moved uh, the zero underscore divin underscore ASC dot HZK file, which is the font file, into the divin underscore set folder. So, so this is done. And now uh, let's return to the uh, software. So we are here in the software. And we are almost done uh, with generating the basic files. So now I uh, go to the file. And then here we have this icon called generate. So click this. And then it says that the config file is generated successfully. So press OK. And what this did is the following. We are here in the Devin set folder. And you can actually see that these three files are now syncing because my folder is synced. Uh, in my backup uh, folder. So you can see that uh, when we press the generate button, then uh, the Devin DGAS uh, software created these three files. And these are just some other configuration files for the display. But now with these five uh, files or six, I just cannot count, with these six files, we are ready to move to the next step, which is uh, preparing the SD card. So grab an SD card, which is less than 32 gigabytes capacity, so 16 or anything below. And uh, yeah, put it in a card reader and uh, connect it to your computer. So I have opened the terminal and you can reach it by pressing the Windows button, entering CMD and uh, pressing enter and you will end up in this terminal and now you want to format your card so i just enter format and then uh, dash q 
Q space and then you have to enter the letter for your uh, SD card drive. For me that's J and always double check if you enter the correct letter. Don't end up uh, formatting what you don't want to format. And then uh, colon and dash again and then we need the file system so fs and it should be fat32 and then again dash the sector uh, size if i remember correctly this should be this so you double check if the drive letter for your sd card is correct and you press enter so then i'm ready so now it's uh, formatting and then I need a name so I just call it Tvin display so now it's done so let's open the file explorer so here is my drive Tvin display and it's empty so I grab another window with my project folder in it and then I uh, copy the files so here is my project folder and I have this divin underscore set uh, folder in it. So I just uh, drag and drop to the divin display folder. So this is done. So I close everything and I return to the main display of the editor. And now I set up another camera in order to demonstrate uh, how to work with this thing. So now everything is ready to upload the files from the SD card to the display. So you can see that now I'm recording the display. And uh, first, let me flip the display so you can see the SD card uh, port of it. So it's right there. So I just insert uh, the SD card. And then I flip it back just so you can see the things. So now I power up the uh, display by connecting it to the USB. And now you can see that something funny is happening. So probably I power it up again. And this is what we should see, yes. So you can see that some process uh, started. So we have to wait for this. Now it's uploading the font file. And now it's finished and it's indicated in the second line that the SD card process end. So that's how we know that we can remove this from the power supply and remove the SD card. And then let's connect it again to the power supply. And now we see the display. So this is the same display as you can see on the monitor. Uh, of course the colors are not too nice through the camera but actually the display is gorgeous so it's basically the same quality as my monitor so it's very nice but uh, you can see that uh, we could finish this process uh, quite easily so this was relatively easy and uh, straightforward so you can see now that uh, it's relatively easy to set up this display and now since you know how to configure the display how to uh, work with the sd card and so on you can start adding uh, more and more functionalities to the display and uh, work with it and also as a side note, uh, please check the links in the description because I also wrote an article about this exact same thing which I showed you in the video. So if you go to my website and uh, check my article, you can follow these step, uh, step by step. And I also uploaded some pictures, so that should help you uh, a bit more. And uh, then at the end, you will be able to use this display uh, properly. And of course, check the playlist which I created for this display because uh, I'm constantly uploading new and uh, fresh videos into that playlist. So there will be more and more features uh, implemented on this display and I will make tutorials about them which will help you to understand this display better and uh, use it in a better and uh, easier way. Also, if you want, you can become my supporter on Patreon. So if you would support me, that would allow me to buy, for example, more of these displays or other uh, peripherals for the display, uh, which I can use to create more uh, tutorials, more interesting or more uh, useful tutorials. And uh, that, that would be fun. 
So I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.